What if I told you that in the United States today, thousands of people are living with the wrong autoimmune diagnosis, because Sjogren's, multiple sclerosis, and rheumatoid arthritis can attack the brain and nervous system in almost identical ways. You feel tingling in your feet, you lose your balance, your hands drop things, and your brain feels like it's running through fog. Your doctor calls it normal for your age. But what if it's not? What if the real damage is already happening, and the longer it's missed, the less chance you have to stop it? By the end of this video, you'll know the brain and nerve symptoms that give away each disease, and the exact tests most doctors never order, that could save your life. 1. Why these three conditions get confused. You'd think that with all the scans, blood work, and high-tech medicine we have today, telling these three conditions apart would be easy. It's not. In fact, Sjogren's syndrome, multiple sclerosis, and rheumatoid arthritis can all attack your brain and nervous system in ways that feel almost identical at the start. Here's how it usually begins. You feel a weird tingling in your feet. Maybe your hand drops things without warning. Or you bend your neck and get this strange, electric jolt down your back. You go to the doctor. They run a few standard tests. Everything comes back normal. And because nothing obvious shows up, they tell you it's stress, age, maybe even anxiety. But here's the problem. Sjogren's syndrome can damage the tiny nerve fibers all over your body. That's not going to show up on a regular MRI or even a nerve conduction study. Multiple sclerosis leaves scars, or lesions, in the brain and spinal cord. But those scars don't always show in the first year or two. And rheumatoid arthritis? It can inflame the blood vessels that feed your brain and spinal cord, causing nerve pain, weakness, even balance problems, long before you ever get the classic swollen, stiff joints people expect. This is why so many people get lost in the system. The early symptoms blur together. Tingling feet could be multiple sclerosis. They could be Sjogren's syndrome. They could be rheumatoid arthritis or related nerve inflammation. On paper, they all look the same. I'll give you a real story. A woman in her early 50s had burning feet at night, blurry vision in the morning, and brain fog so heavy she'd forget what she was saying mid-sentence. Her eye doctor thought it was just eye strain. Her primary doctor said it was menopause. An MI came back clean, so everyone told her to wait and see. Two years later, a rheumatologist finally ran the right tests, and it was Sjogren's syndrome all along. By then, she'd already lost almost half of the nerve fibers in her cornea, and her memory problems weren't going away. This is why you have to understand the small differences. Because even top specialists can mistake one for the other. And in the next part, you're going to see exactly how Sjogren's syndrome can look just like multiple sclerosis in the brain and nerves, and why so many doctors miss it. Before we move on, I want to hear from you. Have you ever been told your symptoms were just stress or aging, only to find out later it was something else? Type mist in the comments if that's happened to you. You'll be surprised how many people here have the same story. 2. Sjogren's brain and nerve attacks. When most people hear Sjogren's syndrome, they think of dry eyes and dry mouth. That's it. But here's what doctors don't always explain. In some people, this condition goes far beyond dryness. It can go after your nervous system. And when that happens, it's a different game entirely. Sjogren's can attack the tiny nerve fibers that carry signals all over your body. This is called small fiber neuropathy. It's not something you'll see on a standard MRI. You won't pick it up on a basic nerve conduction study. But you will feel it, in ways that are hard to ignore. Maybe it starts as a burning sensation in your feet at night, so strong it feels like you're standing on a heating pad or stabbing facial pain that comes out of nowhere and makes it hard to even talk. Some people notice sudden brain blanks, like their thoughts just disappear mid-sentence. Others wake up with numb hands, or they lose coordination without warning. And here's the trap. These symptoms look a lot like early multiple sclerosis. But with Sjogren's, the MI might be completely normal. That's why so many cases get dismissed for years. The real clues come from the right tests, and they are not the ones most people get in the first appointment. For nerve damage, the gold standard is a skin biopsy to measure nerve fiber density. For dryness, a salivary gland ultrasound or lip biopsy can show immune cells actually attacking the glands. And blood tests for SSA and SSB antibodies can confirm an autoimmune attack, even when other markers like ANA are negative. I knew someone, a former teacher in her 60s, 
who had been told for five years that her burning feet and foggy thinking were just circulation issues and normal aging. Her MI was clear. It wasn't until a rheumatologist ordered a skin biopsy that they found she'd lost more than a third of her small nerve fibers. That's permanent damage. This is why you can't rely on just one or two tests. Because if the doctor doesn't look for small fiber neuropathy, if they don't test for SSA and SSB, if they don't consider Sjogren's as a neurological disease, you could be losing nerve function every single day without anyone realizing it. And here's where things get even more confusing. Some of the brain and nerve changes in Sjogren's, especially the ones that affect vision and balance, are almost identical to what happens in multiple sclerosis. Which is exactly what we are going to break down next. If you're watching this and thinking, that sounds like me, don't just sit on it. Type biopsy in the comments if you've ever had, or want to have, the small fiber neuropathy skin biopsy. It helps other viewers see they're not the only ones asking for the right tests. 3. Multiple sclerosis neurological clues. Now, let's talk about multiple sclerosis, because this is where things get even trickier. On the surface, MS and neurological Sjogren's can look almost the same. Tingling in the hands and feet. Sudden weakness in one side of the body. Brain fog. Balance problems. Even changes in vision. But with multiple sclerosis, what's happening inside your nervous system is different. Your immune system is attacking the protective coating around your nerves, the myelin sheath. When that sheath is damaged, nerve signals slow down or get scrambled. That's when you see some of the hallmark MS symptoms. One of the biggest clues is optic neuritis, sudden, painful vision loss or blurred vision in one eye. It can clear up after a few weeks, but for many people, it's the first sign something is wrong. Another giveaway is Lermit's sign, that electric shock feeling running down your spine when you bend your neck forward. And then there's the heat sensitivity, where symptoms flare up after a hot shower or on a warm day. Now, here's the catch. In early MS, your MI might not always show the classic white spots, called lesions, right away. Or they may be in places that a routine scan misses. That's why the right imaging is so important. If MS is suspected, you need an MI with flare sequences, that's fluid attenuated inversion recovery, because it can reveal lesions that a standard MI might hide. And it's not just about the brain. A spinal MI can pick up damage in the cord that explains symptoms in the arms, legs, or bladder. There's also the lumbar puncture, or spinal tap, to check for oligoclonal bands, proteins that signal inflammation in the central nervous system. And sometimes, neurologists will order evoke potential tests to see if nerve signals are slowed down between the eyes, ears, or limbs and the brain. Let me give you an example. A man in his 40s started with numbness in his right hand and blurred vision in one eye. His first MI looked normal, so the doctor said it was probably stress. Two years later, after more weakness and balance problems, a new MI with flare imaging lit up with lesions in his brain and spinal cord. The diagnosis, multiple sclerosis. If those scans had been done earlier, he could have started treatment before more nerve damage set in. Here's where this ties back to our main point. Some people with MS-like symptoms actually have Sjogren's attacking their nerves. And some people diagnosed with Sjogren's later find out they've had MS all along. The overlap is real and it's dangerous if you don't get the right tests early. But this isn't just a problem with Sjogren's and Ms. Rheumatoid Arthritis can also damage the brain and nervous system in ways that look like both. And that's what we're getting into next. If you've ever had an MI come back normal, but your symptoms kept getting worse, type scan in the comments. This will help other people realize they're not alone when the scans don't tell the whole story. 4. Rheumatoid Arthritis and Hidden Nervous System Damage when people think of rheumatoid arthritis, they picture swollen, stiff joints, hands that can't grip a coffee mug, knees that ache in the morning. But what many don't realize is that rheumatoid arthritis can attack far more than your joints. It can damage the blood vessels that supply your brain and spinal cord. And when that happens, the nervous system gets caught in the crossfire. This is called vasculitic neuropathy. It's inflammation in the blood vessels that feed your nerves and it can cause symptoms you'd never expect from an arthritis diagnosis. It can start with sudden weakness in one foot, called foot drop, where you can't lift the front of your foot when you walk. It can cause numb patches on your skin, sharp shooting pains, or even sudden loss of balance. In more severe cases, it can lead to tiny strokes or permanent nerve damage. Here's the twist. Sometimes, 
these nerve problems show up before the classic joint swelling. So someone could be in their 40s or 50s, struggling with unexplained weakness and tingling, and no one even considers rheumatoid arthritis because the hands and knees look fine. The right tests here are different from what you'd get for Sjogren's or multiple sclerosis. Doctors may order nerve conduction studies or an EMG to measure how fast signals travel along your nerves. Blood tests for inflammation, ESR and CRP, can point to an active autoimmune process. And in some cases, vascular imaging is needed to see if blood flow to the brain or spinal cord is being cut off by inflammation. I remember a man in his early 60s who spent years being treated for sciatica because of shooting leg pain and weakness. It wasn't until his hands started swelling that a rheumatologist connected the dots, ran the right blood work, and found aggressive rheumatoid arthritis attacking his nervous system. By that time, the nerve damage in his right leg was permanent. This is why rheumatoid arthritis can be such a dangerous mimic. The brain fog, nerve pain, and coordination problems can look like Sjogren's. The weakness and numbness can look like multiple sclerosis. And if you don't get a full autoimmune and vascular workup, you can lose precious time before treatment even begins. Next, I'm going to lay out the symptom map, the clearest way to see where these three diseases overlap, and the subtle signs that can tip you off to which one you might really be dealing with. If you've ever had strange nerve symptoms but were told it couldn't be rheumatoid arthritis because your joints look fine, type hidden in the comments. You might be shocked at how many people here have the same story. 5. The Symptom Map Let's pull this together. Because when you hear all these symptoms scattered across different appointments, they sound random. But when you put them side by side, a pattern starts to show. Picture this like three circles that overlap. In the middle, where all three meet, you've got things like brain fog, tingling in the hands or feet, muscle weakness, balance problems, and even vision changes. That's why the confusion happens. Now, let's step out of that middle and look at what makes each one stand out. Sjogren's syndrome. You might have burning nerve pain at night, especially in your feet. Your eyes feel gritty, like there's sand in them, or your mouth is so dry you need water just to swallow. Fatigue isn't just tiredness, it's the kind of crash where you can't push through. And the kicker? All this can happen even when your joints look perfectly normal. Multiple sclerosis, vision changes tend to be more dramatic here. You might lose sight in one eye for days or weeks, or colors look washed out. Heat makes everything worse a hot shower, a summer afternoon, and you might notice that electric shock feeling when you bend your neck forward. Weakness can be one-sided, like only one arm or one leg. Rheumatoid arthritis, symmetry is the big clue. When joint swelling finally shows, it's usually on both sides, both hands, both knees. But before that, nerve symptoms from vasculitis can creep in, foot drop, shooting pains, or sudden balance loss. These can arrive months or even years before the obvious joint changes. When you think about it this way, it's like a puzzle. The pieces are all on the table, but unless someone knows how to put them together, you could end up with the wrong picture for years. In the next part, I'm going to give you the exact words and tests to ask for so you can help your doctor see the full picture faster. Because once you know what to request, you can skip years of wrong turns. If you've been told three different diagnoses over the years and still don't have answers, type map in the comments. I want to see how many people here are living in that overlap without realizing it. 6. What to ask your doctor. This is the part most people never get told. You can walk into an appointment with brain fog, numb feet, and balance problems. But if you don't ask for the right tests, you'll walk out with nothing more than we'll keep an eye on it. So here's exactly how you change that. If you suspect Sjogren's syndrome, and especially if you have dryness along with nerve symptoms, say this. I'd like to be tested for small fiber neuropathy with a skin biopsy, and I'd like SSA and SSB antibody blood work, even if my ANA is negative. For multiple sclerosis concerns, particularly if you've had vision changes, heat sensitivity, or that electric shock feeling when bending your neck, you ask for an MRI with flare sequences of the brain and spine, plus a lumbar puncture to check for oligoclonal bands. And if rheumatoid arthritis is on the table, especially with symmetrical joint pain or unexplained weakness, say, I'd like ESR, CRP, rheumatoid factor, and anti-CCP blood tests, along with nerve conduction studies and vascular imaging to check blood flow to my nerves. Here's the truth, doctors are trained to follow a process, 
but that process often starts with the most common problems first. If you don't speak up, your symptoms may get chalked up to stress, aging, or something benign while the real damage continues. And here's a tip that works. Document your symptoms daily for at least two weeks before your appointment. Note what time of day they happen, what you were doing, and how long they last. Patterns matter. When you hand that to your doctor, it's harder for them to dismiss what you're feeling. Because the goal here isn't to convince your doctor you have one disease or another, it's to make sure they can't ignore the possibility, and they order the tests that can finally reveal the truth. Next, I'm going to show you why getting this wrong costs more than time. It can cost your mobility, your independence, and even your memory. If you've ever walked out of a doctor's office feeling like they didn't take your symptoms seriously, type ASK in the comments. Let's see how many of us have had to fight just to get the right tests. 7. What's the cost of getting it wrong? Here's the hard truth. Every year you go without the right diagnosis isn't just lost time. It's not just another appointment on the calendar. It's lost nerve fibers. It's lost brain cells. It's lost independence, piece by piece, in ways you don't always notice until it's too late. Once certain types of nerve damage set in, they don't grow back. You can calm the inflammation. You can slow the progression. But you can't bring back what's been destroyed. And the longer you wait, the smaller your window gets for preserving what's left. That's why catching this early isn't optional, it's everything. I've met people who spent 5, 8, even 10 years chasing the wrong diagnosis. By the time someone finally ordered the right scan, the right biopsy, the right antibody panel, the damage was already locked in. One woman told me she used to love walking barefoot on the grass in the summer. By the time she got her real diagnosis, she couldn't feel the ground under her feet at all. Another man had to stop driving because his vision would blur without warning. Dangerous on the road and terrifying in daily life. And then there are those who lose their short-term memory so badly, they can't follow a simple conversation without notes. Here's the part almost nobody talks about. When your nerves aren't firing correctly, your brain starts to adapt in ways that aren't always helpful. The circuits meant for memory, focus, and coordination begin shutting down. Other areas try to compensate, but they are not built for the job. Over time, this can lead to brain atrophy, actual shrinkage of brain tissue, something you can see on advanced imaging if you know what to look for. And this isn't just about medical terms or MI reports. It's about real-life consequences. Losing your balance might sound like an inconvenience, until it means a fall, a broken hip, months of rehab, or never walking without help again. Losing feeling in your feet might sound minor, until you step on something sharp and don't realize you've got a deep wound until it's infected. Losing your memory might seem like forgetfulness, until it means you can't cook safely, pay your bills, or live alone. That's why I'm not talking to you like this is some academic debate about autoimmune disease. This is about your ability to stay you, to think clearly, to move freely, to wake up each day without the fear that the next symptom will be the one that changes everything. In the next part, I'm going to give you the exact step you can take right now to close the gap between symptoms and diagnosis, and I'll show you how to connect with others who are in the same fight so you don't go through it alone. And before we move on, I want to hear from you. If you've already lost time because of a wrong or delayed diagnosis, type time in the comments. Your story might be the one that makes someone else push harder, sooner, and that could change their life. If you've made it this far, you already know more about these three conditions than most people do when they first walk into a doctor's office. And now you've got something they don't, the exact questions, tests, and red flags to watch for. But knowing this and doing something with it are two different things. So here's what I want you to do. Go to the comments and type symptom map right now. That tells me you're serious about getting clarity on your own health, and I'll know to send you the free visual guide that lays this all out side by side. And don't stop here. Because if you've had brain fog, balance problems, or nerve pain, you need to see the video I'm linking right here. In it, I show you the 12 brain and nerve symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome that most doctors never check for, and the one scan that can catch them early. Click that now, and I'll meet you over there. It could save you years of frustration, and maybe even protect your brain before the damage goes too far.